Hi everybody and welcome to this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. The Bisons are 4-0. They are now ranked 20th nationally after this week's poll has just come out and after a 57-7 victory over UAM on Saturday night. Ronnie Huckabee, when you score 57 points, most of the time I lead with a question about the offense. Right. But I thought the defense, without a doubt, set the tone in the football game uh, on the first series, a three and out, and put pressure on the quarterback all night long. First play, honestly, Billy, uh, we got tremendous penetration into the backfield, hit the running back two or three yards deep, and uh, from that point forward, our defense was extremely dominant. And like you said, I think it everything turned from that point off of the way our defense was playing. And it resulted in good field position all night for your football team. On that first series, you had the football to begin that series in UAM territory and cashed it in. And it seemed like you were playing on the UAM field a lot throughout the game. We had short fields just about the entire first half. And that, because we were able to execute offensively in addition to how well we were playing on defense, uh, we were able to get control of the game really quickly. And that was, that was good. You have to feel good as a coach going on the road playing UAM like that and seeing your team so prepared because you could tell I was down on the field before the game and your football team, the way they came out, it was a business trip. It, we had a very business-like approach to that game the entire week. We, as coaches, know what a difficult place it, UAM is to play. Uh, you know, it's our only grass field that we're playing on this year. Uh, we knew that the conditions were not going to be great. You know, it was blazing hot all last week. It was really hot and humid at game time. But the way our guys approached practice last week, we had a real strong feeling that we were going to be, be prepared and ready to play and have the right mindset. And uh, I was so proud of our guys for the way they approached the entire week. And we've talked about depth on this football team a lot. How much did that come into play on a very hot night on Saturday night? We were able to roll, you know, at least – Two groups in and out, and in some cases three. And because of our because of our depth, we were able to keep guys fairly fresh throughout the entire first half. And then because of the way we had control of the game in the first half and came back out at halftime, we were able to actually play our our backup guys for most of the second half. And that was good for them and good for us. So it was a good deal. All right. Coach, great to be with you today and looking forward to looking at the highlights. And we're also glad to have you with us. We have a lot of highlights. We'll start with first half highlights right after this. We explore dozens of complex subjects, but sometimes the world sees college students as being the same, lumps us together. That's okay, because the world may underestimate what we can do as strong, responsible, highly trained and confident Christian professionals. And isn't that what the world needs? Qualities taught one-on-one -on -one and valued by us all in a place of faith, learning, and living. Harding University. I never felt all that special. But in the wake of an earthquake, we can all do something. When donating goods, it's hard to know what's needed. So now it's my turn to help. Aid workers can spend me locally where I can help save lives. Someone is doing better because of me. Together, we made that happen. Hi everybody, welcome back to Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. The Bison's a big win on Saturday night. And coach, we start by looking at first half highlights. Your defense would give the football back to your offense with great field position. I know you like to see your defense out there first as the Bisons come out of the field uh, wearing those uh, white uniforms on the road and uh, the defense, as I said, set the tone. And then the offense would get the football right uh, after the defense sets the tone right here. Right, you can see that's great pressure by our front four and that's one of two sacks by Cordell Zielinski who had a fantastic game and uh, we come right back out and get the ball pitched on the triple to Zach Shelley. Great block in front of him by Eric Kelly and others. And we get the ball down inside the 20 uh, right off the bat. Run the toss. You can see another beautiful block by Eric Kelly out in front of Zach. And Zach is doing a great job behind that goal line. We, we thought he was I thought he was going to score, in. yeah. But uh, we come right back and run the quarterback ISO. And Park scores. And we're off to the races. Now, we had a little issue with our extra points early and missed a couple of those. Actually, a couple of those were blocked. 
and you can see the penetration up the middle, which is that's not acceptable. And we got to do a much better job than that. We got that corrected as we went forward, but uh, that was a concern. You can look at, I mean, that's a stone wall that the running back is running yeah, into. Yeah, Arthur Akers uh, was uh, outstanding on Saturday night. Arthur along with a whole bunch mm -hmm. of others. And here's the toss again coming out of our own end zone to Eric. Uh, this is Eric Simmons. Uh, Brandon Gates blocking. Andrew Dather blocking for him out in front. This is a great job of getting us off our own goal line. And here's pressure again. And there's Cordell again with sack number two. And great pressure also by Trayvon Bigelow who was dominant throughout the night. And uh, that, those plays that we just watched, as far as the first quarter are concerned, are indicative of how well our defense played the, the entire game. This is the midline option, and this is Park uh, on the carry after he's reading his way out of that. It's 6 nothing right now, but Coach, here's a big play. I want you to talk about this. Right, this is Andrew Dather on the quick screen, and Andrew is a fantastic athlete, as you can see. He just jumped over the defensive yeah. back. Now, you've got to be careful with that. Somebody's going to raise up and and make him pay for that. But anyway, this this is the midline again with Park on the carry. And that's a touchdown for the Bisons. And I mentioned 6 nothing going into the second quarter. This would really kickstart the second quarter, which was a tremendous quarter for the Bisons. Right. 30 points in the second quarter. And, uh, you know, that that touchdown was the start of that scoring string. So up 13 nothing right now. This is passed down the middle, intercepted by Ja'Cory Nichols, true freshman, and that's Ja'Cory's first mm -hmm. interception, and, and we said that's the first of many to come. Yeah. <laughs> he, he does a great job, uh, plays with a lot of passion, and, and is very talented. Hand off to Romar Reeds, and you can look at that little cut that Romar made, and we've seen that as we progress through the season. He's uh, outstanding with the ball in his hands, and uh, just exactly what we thought he would be. Uh, and he's making a great impact on our football team as a true freshman. There's another one that's blocked, and uh, that's discouraging. Uh, we, can't, we can't allow that to happen, and we, as I said, we made a change and, and got that fixed. And, uh, but once, once that happens to you, people are going to continue to try to do that, so we've got to be ready. A great su support right there by Dalen Markham. Dalen, we continue to talk about him week to week, how well he's playing. This is a pass uh, to Eric Kelly from Park Parish off a of play action, off a of triple option action. And then we come back and we get the ball pitched on the triple, and what a, what a run by Eric Kelly. Uh, great job by him breaking a tackle, making yards after contact, and getting into the end zone. Yeah, 38 yards. I love to see those slot back score, Coach, because they do so much work with they our blocking. do so much work. And, you know, we continue to talk week to week about Eric Kelly blocking for Zach mm -hmm. Shelley. And it was great to see Eric get a chance to carry the football. And there's Park again on the midline, really close to breaking that one. But that's happening because of great blocking up front and Park doing a good job of reading the option. This is the quarterback follow uh, on that particular play. Michael went the wrong way. And so Park was on his own but did a good job of getting the ball in the end zone. 33 nothing right now for the Bisons and a chance to, to score one more time here before the end of the, the first half. And I thought it was a, a big opportunity down here. You talked about the special teams, and, and I thought this was a big shot in the arm for the special teams. It was. And, you know, Tristan doesn't get a lot of opportunities or up to this point he hasn't had a lot of opportunities to kick field goals. But he did a great job. And when that happens, that's the result of great operation by John Kane, who's our deep snapper and Cole Blickenstaff, who is our holder. And those guys continue to work really hard in practice and do a great job. That, you know, that operation time is critical. Uh, what we want to happen is that if, if our operation time is just right, then there's no way someone can block it coming off the edge. Now, it's up to us to make sure we protect the middle, and we got to do a better job than we did in the first quarter there. But I'm excited about that team. Uh, Tristan is, is kicking the ball in all phases really well right now. And uh, we want to continue to give him opportunities to, to cash in on those field goal attempts. And I also thought it was a great opportunity for the special teams uh, confidence-wise because it was 33 nothing at that point. There's going to be a time this season where you're going to need a field goal maybe late in a football game, right. in, in a three-point game, maybe right. a one-point game. So I thought that was a great opportunity. It was. And, 
you know, the, the way that happened is that, that was a result of a turnover mm -hmm. caused by our defense. We were able to run one play, get the ball a little bit closer to the goal line, and then run our field goal team out there to attempt that kick. And it was really good to see it uh, be successful. And to have the lead like this at the half, you knew it was going to give you an opportunity to come out and, and play a lot of guys. We didn't see Park Parish in the second half. How important is that right in the middle of a football season uh, trying to protect guys? Well, not only that, in order to, in, in order to make a run in mm -hmm. this conference, you're going to have guys that are second, third teamers for you that are going to have to come mm -hmm. in and play significant snaps. They're going to have to be able to get the job done. And for those guys to get those number of reps in game four was really significant for us, in my opinion. Uh, when we came back out to start the second half, we felt pretty confident that we had control of the football game and that our defense was going to continue to play well. And so you know, we believe in Terrence Dingle, mm -hmm. big time. And he just needs to continue to get more game reps. Right. And the fact that he got the majority of the reps in the second half was really good for our football team. It was good for him. And going forward, it's going to be great for us. So the Bisons at the half at this portion of our highlights up 36 to nothing at halftime. Stay with us. We'll come back and look at second half highlights right after this. A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. Welcome back to Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee as we get ready to look at third quarter highlights. The Bison's right now leading 36 to nothing. You've felt great. Obviously, you're in control of the football game as we go back to the second half. But I know you still want that football team to keep the intensity up, and they did in the second half. No doubt. We, in, in order for you to come out of a game with a good feeling, you got to finish the game mm -hmm. with the correct way. And we didn't have a wonderful third quarter, to be honest with you, offensively, but we had a great fourth quarter. And uh, I think that was a, a function of Terrence getting a little bit better feel for how they were playing. You know, it's hard to come off the bench and, and, mm -hmm. and see a defense and, and, and just play great right out of the bat, but he was able to kind of get his, get his uh, feet under him and get it going. That's Bobby Green, yeah. pass to Bobby. It was great to see Bobby get in there and get some meaningful reps because he is a very talented football player that we're so glad to have. This is Frank Herbert running the back down after he changed direction, and that's a great job by Frank. That's another tackle for loss. I think we had nine on the night, which was uh, you know, very pivotal in how we were able to play on defense. And how much does that show the speed on the defense when you talk about tackles for loss? Big time. Speed, penetration, passion, just playing with great effort. This was a, a, a pitch, an ill-advised pitch to Eric Simmons. Terrence, uh, that was based off of a misread, and you know he knew it as soon as he came over to the sideline. And uh, but you know you don't you don't get those opportunities unless you're on the field and able to do that. This was just good defense. In I my thought opinion. it was too. I uh, thought Isaiah. I, Isaiah was battling that guy, and that guy was pushing him, and he was pushing Isaiah. And most of the time, that's not called against an outstanding receiver. Outstanding receiver. Jalen is a is an exceptional receiver. One of the best that's been in our conference in a long time. And he had six catches for 19 yards in that ball game, which I think is a tribute to how well our guys played in the secondary. And Isaiah with the interception there, Isaiah Jefferson. Right. That, you know, Isaiah is one of those guys, he is just a ball hawk. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's around the ball. He's, he's causing turnovers. Uh, he gets the deflections. And that is a very valuable person to have on your football team. That's Terrence again with the midline. Uh, doing a great job of reading that and getting up in the crease. 
And this is down the goal line. We run the quarterback ISO, and he saw a crease really quick and took it and got into the end zone, which was great. Great to see him get a chance to score, celebrate with his teammates. That's Park coming off the bench to celebrate with Terrence, which is a wonderful thing to see. You know, those guys are both pulling for each other sure. when they're in the ball game. And now the Bison's up 43-7 after that score. Now this is the handoff to Romar Reeds, and, and you know Romar scored three touchdowns, averaged over 10 yards per carry, which we had four guys basically that did that. Uh, that's the counterplay to Grant, and uh, we get a penalty on that play. I believe that allowed us to convert that third down, and we turn around and hand the ball off to Romar, and I think that's touchdown number two for him. When Romar Reeds touches the football, he's, he has a chance to score about every time, doesn't he? he? Really, I mean, there's an opportunity. He really does. He is great with the ball in his hands. And we, you know, as we said a while ago, we continue to be impressed with him as a true freshman. Bison's up 50-7 to seven right now. A lot of young guys on defense out on the field. That, those are a lot of guys who are on our, on our third team. And, See Bo uh, Weddle in there. Bo in there. That's a really young bunch playing on the defensive line. A couple of true freshmen. And... Uh, you can see those guys are still getting after them, playing really hard, which is what you want to see. When you, when you have your guys that don't get a lot of opportunities to play and they're getting in there and being aggressive and getting after it, and then, of course, we get the ball back one more time and hand the ball off to Romar in a very basic play, just the, the fullback dive, and he takes it into the end zone. And those are young guys up front blocking for him. So, Final point of the game right here, the Bisons won at 57 to seven. Romar Reeds does not need much room uh, to run, Coach, and now your favorite formation, right? Right. Victory formation, favorite formation. We're able to kneel it out. That's the end of the football game. And uh, good business trip, as we talked about earlier, for the Bisons. Uh, take care of business, get to 4-0, and, and now we get to get to get ready for the Tigers this week. I've talked a lot about the defensive stance, and there's one more I want to throw out in a minute, but I have to give the offense some love, obviously. 435 yards of offense uh, in the football game, and when you got in the red zone, you scored. Right. I think a, a, a bigger stat maybe even than that, Billy, is yards per play. Mm -hmm. uh, when you start looking at yards per play over the course of the time that we've been running this offense, it has been significant. Uh, there have been a year or two where we averaged seven yards per snap through the course of the season. And we're, we, we averaged, uh, I was, I'm not sure exactly what we averaged per snap the other night, but it was outstanding. And we didn't run, we didn't have that many snaps. Uh, the time of possession was basically even in that football game. But because we were so productive when we had the football, it, it, we were able to, as I said earlier, gain control of the game and get a lot of people reps that we were excited about seeing them play on the field. And what was the key to the stat three of 14? That was what uh, UAM was on third down. They were only three of 14 in third down situations. We got our defense got off the field. And a lot of times they got off the field giving us the football in outstanding field position. Mm -hmm. If you just, as we talked about this earlier, but as you look at the way that game played out, our starting position and their starting position was a very telltale sign in the outcome of that football game. We had the ball on their side of the 50 multiple times in the first half, and they were starting deep in their territory, and our defense was keeping them there. When we did have to punt, we punted them down. They had to start from you know, inside their 10-yard line one time. So uh, just a great night for the Bisons. So the Bisons win it 57-7, to now 4-0 on the season. Stay with us when we come back on this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. We will talk about the Great American Conference, look at the standings and look at the scores around the league in just a moment. Hey, look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Look. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. Sometimes all it takes to be a dad is remembering how to be a kid again. <laughs> Take time to be a dad today. I see it, I see it! There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours 
at discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. The Great American Conference teams now with four games under their belt. Two 4 0 teams, the Bisons and Henderson State, and then Washita, Southeastern Oklahoma, and Southern Arkansas at 3 and 1 on the season. This thing is, uh, we've talked about what a great race it's going to be. And Washita went on the road. We're going to see them this week. We'll right. talk about the Tigers in, in depth a little bit later right. on, but they went on the road, got a big win at Northwestern Oklahoma and Southern Arkansas. I thought that Tech. Uh, Southern Arkansas game. That was a heck of a game. 28-21, Southern Arkansas beats Arkansas Tech to remain just with one loss. And I think most people in the conf conference realize that that, was, that maybe was the game of the week. Uh, SAU coming off of our game, which they played us extremely tough. And then Tech you know, had a, had a rough start with their game at Oklahoma Baptist. Bounced back last week with a win over UAM. Uh, two teams battling to stay in the race. And as we said earlier in the in the season when we were doing the show, this this race is wide open. Uh, one loss is not going to keep you out of the race by any stretch of the imagination. A lot of good teams at the top, and you look at the stretch of games that we got in mm -hmm. front of us, right, and right. and you know that week to week, you just got to be ready to play. I mean, it's uh, it's one of those kind of things that the the conference is very balanced. There are a lot of good teams. Now Henderson looks dominant. We'll see how that how that continues to play out, but. Uh, we think Washington Baptist is one of the best teams we've seen in a long time. Uh, I'm not talking about this year in this yeah, race. Uh, they are outstanding uh, on offense. I mean, you you break the film down, and they year in and year out have a great offensive line. It's one of their points of pride, and and understandably so, they do a great job with them. Uh, this year, they may have the best offensive line that that I've seen them have, which that is a really strong statement. And then you back that up with a quarterback who is as dynamic a run pass threat as Austin Warford. And you look at Chris Oliver and Brandon Marks, who are both really outstanding tailbacks. And then they got a bevy of receivers that are uh, as good as we've seen. Uh, they present a great challenge. And then the converse of that is defensively. They year in and year out do as good a job against our offense as anybody that we play. And I think some of that has to do with the fact that Coach Knight, is an, he's an old uh, triple option guy, uh, worked with David Lee out at uh, Texas El Paso, and he has an understanding of what we're trying to do on our offense, and regardless who, of who their defensive coordinator has been, they, they've come very prepared, and they'll do that again this Saturday. I think it's a great matchup. Uh, two very, very similar schools, and, and as far as the, our, our culture and what we're trying to do, and I, you know, their kids always play really hard. I, we believe our kids always play really hard. And you can look at the history of this rivalry, and uh, it never really seems to matter what the record is. We're going to play it down to the wire, and uh, we, we're looking forward to Saturday. It's going to be a lot of fun. It, it should be a great atmosphere for a college football game. Washita in town this weekend, and we'll talk more about that with Coach and preview that game and also get a question from a fan after this break on Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. Now they're beating us on the boards out there, guys. This is your territory, Grimson. Do your job. Grimson. Hello? Hi, honey. What? Now? All right. Yitsy bitsy spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. I love you, Daddy. I love you too, sweetheart. Hey, it's my girl. You know, my daughter. Love. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Healing takes time. It also takes knowledge and expertise. Here we learn to reach out to and care for others through the application of medicine and true compassion. We understand that our mission is to take our training and abilities out into the world where they can and do heal the lives of others. For us, that mission began in a place of faith, learning, and living. 
Harding University. Welcome back to this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. And now it's time to get a question from a fan for Coach. Week four is behind us as we head into week number five. And here's this week's question for Coach Huckabee. Hey, Coach Huckabee, uh, this is Jackson Smith. Uh, I was wondering, uh, starting off 4-0 this season and with the big rivalry game this weekend, uh, what are you looking forward to from your players uh, coming up for this uh, football game? Looking forward to a great week. Billy, this is fun. I mean, this is uh, as good as it gets. You've got uh, you got a 4-0 team, and, and in all honesty, Washtenaw could very easily be 4-0. They had a they had one bad quarter against Southeastern where they turned the ball over a few times, which which is really uncharacteristic of them. That over the years, that has been a football team that doesn't make mistakes, does not beat themselves, and so it it could very easily be two 4-0 teams and. Uh, the fact that the weather has turned into fall a little bit and it's family weekend for us. We're going to have a huge crowd there. We got Midnight Madness this week. Mm -hmm. We've got lectureships this week. We've got uh, so much going on on campus and we, we are really going to have a, a great atmosphere on campus. OBU will travel well. They'll bring a good crowd. And if you remember a couple of years ago, the atmosphere for that ball game was mm -hmm. as good as it gets. and so. Uh, game that went to overtime. Game that went to overtime. So what more could you ask for? I mean, we are so excited about this opportunity, and I'm sure they are too. So uh, we just can't wait till Saturday. It's one of those games with someone like me that uh, can set up top and root for your football team. I wish we were playing right now. I'm ready to go. <laughs> but you need a good week of practice, don't you, from your football team? We do. And we'll be working really hard this week to make sure that we're prepared in every way, as they will, I'm sure. And uh, when that happens, that is the essence of college football. You get a you get a great night. You get wonderful kids who are, you know, it's important to them. They paid the price throughout the year to be able to work hard and play their best. And we'll turn them loose on Saturday, and uh, we'll live with we live with the results. All right, Coach. Always great to be with you. Have a great week, and we'll see you again next week. Thank you. That's all for this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. We hope to see you at First Security Stadium. Remember, 6 p.m. kickoff, the Bisons and the Tigers on Saturday night. We'll see you next time.